welcome back to Inverted Aviators RC. If you're new to the world of FPV or just curious about how FPV goggles work, you're in the right place. Today we're going to explore the major parts of the FPV goggles and their functions as well as what we use and how to set them up. So let's dive right in. FPV goggles are designed to bring the world of your remote controlled vehicle directly to your eyes. Their core function is to receive and display a live video feed from the camera mounted on your remote control vehicle. Once you put on your FPV goggles, you're instantly transported into the environment where your vehicle is flying. It's as if you're right there in the cockpit experiencing everything firsthand. So we're gonna start by looking at the screens. Most FPV goggles come equipped with dual screens, one for each eye. This setup provides a stereoscopic 3D view, enhancing the depth perception and creating a profound sense of presence as if you're actually in the pilot seat. These two lenses play a vital role in magnifying and focusing the displayed image and they create an immersive feeling and improve the image clarity by focusing the image onto your eyes. This head strap ensures a hands-free operation and it's adjustable for a secure and comfortable fit during flights. And these face plates or foam padding ensure that no light leaks in and it reduces glare during your flight. Depending on what pair of goggles you decide to get, they may or may not have an interpupillary distance adjustment or IPD, which lets you personalize the distance between the lenses to match your unique eye spacing. So you can see here, if I move these sliders, the lenses themselves move. And so if you got a little bit wider eyes or closer, you can adjust it to what you want. Super handy. Moving on to the antennas. As you can see here, we got a whole wide array of antennas and there's two main types. You'll have your omnidirectional antenna and your patch antenna. The omnidirectional antennas receive signals in all directions in a donut shape and they provide a general 360 degree coverage. They are super simple to use and do not require precise alignment and they're suitable for short to medium range flights. However, they are limited in range. You can think about this like a light bulb. A single light bulb by itself will shine bright in every single direction, but if you went to stand a mile away, it'd be very hard to see said light bulb. Moving on to the patch antennas, they are much more focused than the omnidirectional antenna. They send out signal in a pie slice direction and they have really, really good signal when you're in that pie slice. They offer higher gain, which enables a longer range and a stronger signal transmission and their precise alignment when aligned correctly can provide a really strong connection. However, they do have limited coverage. Opposite to the omnidirectional, they are really good when you are in a very specific pie slice. However, when you're outside of that range, they can drop off in signal very quickly. That means they require very precise alignment. And if you do it incorrectly, you'll have a very weak connection. This will also mean that you might have some blind spots if you only use a patch antenna. Going back to the light bulb example from the omnidirectional, this is like a laser beam. You can point it exactly where you wanna go and you'll have really good signal. However, if you fly right outside that laser beam, now moving on to the receiver. The receiver captures the video signal from your FPV camera or other devices. Two main types of receivers that you can get are a single antenna receiver or a double antenna receiver. Starting with the single antenna, they are super simple. A single antenna receivers are straightforward. They have fewer connections, fewer components, and require minimal figuration. They're also much more affordable compared to the double receiver setup, and they still provide pretty decent performance. A single antenna receiver can work well for short range FPV flying or when it comes to signal strength, is generally strong. That's because you can only attach either omnidirectional or a patch antenna. So if you're flying in a very straight line far away, patch antenna is your way to go. Or if you're flying around you pretty close, you can get away with a single antenna omnidirectional connection. However, they do have a little bit more limited range. Their performance can degrade quickly if the drone moves further away. The biggest con when it comes to a single antenna receiver is the lack of diversity. Now diversity comes from a receiver being able to switch between two antenna signals very quickly. And so that's where the benefit of having two comes into play. On this rapid fire module, which we will link in the comments, like we do all of our other things that we talk about in this video, with this rapid fire module, which is a double antenna receiver, you can have both a patch and an omnidirectional antenna, and they will switch in between whichever signal is stronger without you even noticing. The downside is it just costs more. It's a little bit more complex to figure out what antennas and what things you want to add on to this receiver. I like to use the rapid fire diversity because it allows us to both fly around us, like you can see in our videos, we'll fly pretty close to where we're sitting, but we can also, with the patch, fly pretty far away if we wanna to go to the other side of the field. Having a diversity receiver allows us to not be tethered to where we're sitting, rather, we can switch in between short and long distances without landing. 
Another tip is make sure that you align your receiver and your antennas with the right polarization. So you can see this is a right hand circular polarized patch antenna, and these are all right hand circular polarized. Now they come in right and left hand circular polarized and make sure that you match that with whatever module you're using. These are both right hand circular polarized and they work together. If you buy a right and a left hand, it simply won't work and you'll have no signal strength. Now, some goggles will come with a DVR or a digital video recorder, and it's super nice when you want to record your flights. Like that's what we use with all of our videos. Some goggles will come with an SD card slot right in the middle, and you'll be able to record the video and take it off the SD card. All goggles also come with buttons on top for navigation. You can switch between channels, display, the analog and recording are all really easy to access when you're flying and also on the ground and changes from goggle to goggle, but for the most part, they're very similar. Also, some goggles come with a nice ventilation fan on the top, which allows you to keep cool during those hot flying days. If you don't have a fan, the lenses themselves can come fogged up because this seal from all the foam will keep all the heat in and that'll end up with a very warm flight. Now that we've covered the basics of the FPV goggle, we can take a deeper look at the three pairs of goggles that we're going to be comparing today. We're gonna start out with our budget option, which is the Fat Shark Teleporter V5. This was actually our first FPV goggle and it works really, really well. While the screen on the inside is a little bit smaller compared to the others, it works really well with the camera screen size and it has built-in brightness and contrast uh, sliders, which you can see on the top here. Now moving on to our middle option, which is the Fat Shark Dominator V3. Now these are a little bit pricier, but they have a much larger screen size and it feels like you're flying from a big screen TV instead of a small screen TV from the Teleporter V5. You also need to purchase a receiver module if you do buy these Dominator V3s. And that's when you can pick up the diversity, a rapid fire module, or just a single, a single antenna receiver. But either way, uh, this allows for a lot more customizability when it comes to flying FPV. And last but not least, the DJI Goggles V2. In order to use this with the cameras that we use, you have to pick up a a digital to analog converter. And what this does, it takes the AV input from the Goggles V2 and it allows you to use either a single or a double receiver similar to the Dominator V3. Now, while the DJI Goggles V2 are by far the priciest compared to these two, it is amazing compared to the other two. The screen size is so much bigger, the field of view is very much larger, and it feels like you're flying from a theater compared to a big screen TV. There are many factors to consider when picking out a pair of FPV goggles, but the two we're gonna focus on are the FOV and the screen resolution because they drive the viewing experience. Field of view, often abbreviated as FOV, is a term you've probably come across when researching FPV goggles. It's all about how much of the world you can see while wearing goggles. A wider FOV provides a much more immersive experience and it's like stepping into the cockpit of your RC vehicle. With a wider FOV, it's much easier to maneuver through tight spots and judge distances accurately. It also helps improve situational awareness. Broader field of view allows you to spot obstacles, other drones, other hazardous materials, and avoid them, which is crucial for your safety. And how do our three goggles compare? The Fat Shark Teleporter V5 has a field of view of 25 degrees. The Dominator V3 has a 30 degree field of view and the DJI Goggles V2 with the analog converter has a field of view of 54 degrees. Moving on to the screen resolution and the image clarity. A higher resolution display gives you a sharper, clearer view of the world from your drone's perspective. This means you can spot obstacles and details more easily, which is crucial for safety and avoiding collisions. Next, immersion. A high resolution display means that you feel like you're inside the cockpit of your drone or RC vehicle, and the experience is a big part of what makes FPV so much fun to fly. And don't forget about your own comfort. A high resolution display can reduce eye strain and fatigue during those long FPV sessions, so you can keep flying without any discomfort. So what's the breakdown? The Teleporter V5 comes in at 320 by 240. The Fat Shark Dominator V3 comes in at 800 by 480 and the Goggles V2 comes in at 1440 by 810. For those of you who are more visual learners like I am, here's an example of the difference between screen resolution and FOV between the three goggles that we're looking at. First up, you'll see the Fat Shark Teleporter V5, which is the smallest at 320 by 240 in screen resolution and only 25 degrees in field of view. Moving on to the Fat Shark Dominator V3, which has a screen resolution of 800 by 480 and a field of view of 30 degrees, a little bit bigger, still pretty nice. And lastly, moving on to the DJI 
DJI goggles V2 with the analog adapter, you are seeing in 1440 by 810 with a field of view of 54 degrees. So as you can see, this should be a side-by-side -side comparison. As we move up in the quality and the price of goggles, the screen gets larger, it gets more resolution, it's nicer to see, it's better to watch, and it's a pretty easy step ladder as you go up through the goggles. We also wanna give a quick thank you because our last video about setting up the camera, which is currently sitting around 1500 views, and we want to say thank you so much for all of you who have taken the time to watch our videos because when we started making these, we just thought, well, it's kind of fun to share the knowledge, but it's really nice to see all the positive feedback and comments. We just want to say thank you for all the time that you've shared with us. We only hope that we can share as much knowledge as possible with you guys. When purchasing goggles, it's really important to make sure that the camera that you chose and the goggles will be compatible. In order to ensure this, you have to check the frequency at which the FPV camera operates. Most FPV cameras use a 5.8 gigahertz signal for transmission, while others use a digital system like DJI. So if you want to use these DJI goggles, you'll need to get the adapter, which will change from a digital signal to a 5.8 gigahertz signal. And now what you've all been waiting for, how to connect the goggles to the camera. So I'm going to take the battery and let's plug it into the plane. If you use the powered by the board method, it's as easy as plugging the battery in. And just like that, our camera has power. As you can see here, there is a little screen on the back of the camera, which tells you a few different things. So it starts, it has B, three lines, and a six. And so what that means, it's on band B, three bars of power, which means 200 milliwatts, and channel six. And so that's really easy if you have a pair of goggles that have a screen on them, because then you can check and see what channel. But I'm gonna be showing it in both a single non-screen receiver, as well as the rapid fire double receiver setup. Um, so if you start off with no screen and you know what channel it's on, first thing you gotta do is plug in the camera. All right, so we got the camera on and as you can see, there's a whole lot of static and that's because we're not on the right channel. And in order to get the right channel on these goggles, which are the Dominator V3s, they'll have a channel up and down button. And so it's as easy as clicking through these channels until you hear the long beep, which means you're at the very end. And if you click through, And there we go, we found it, easy as that. And you can keep going all the way through the channels to see if anyone are clearer. But once you find a clear and smooth static view, you're good to go, it's that easy. Uh, you don't have to set up any internal channels, you have to do anything like that. The camera has its own uh, channel matrix, which I'll show up on the screen. But these goggles, so long as they're 5.8 gigahertz, which this receiver is and that camera is, it's super simple. All right, I just switched the goggles over to the double antenna diversity rapid fire uh, module and watch what happens when I just plug this in. And you see that on the screen? B6. That means it scanned all of the channels and found the correct one. As simple as that, I didn't do anything. And that's how awesome it is. You can also click through with this little lever on the side if you wanted to select it manually. You can see it's scrolling through all of the possible channels. B6. It found it, it selected it, as you can see on the inside, perfect. So what do you do if you and your friends are all out flying, you notice that you're all on the same band and channel. This can cause some interference and breakups. And so what you wanna do is change the channel. And with this all-in-one FPV camera, it's super easy to do so. So if I plug in, you can see that I am on band E, channel eight. And I've got 200 milliwatts of power as described by those two bars. Now, if I wanna change the channel, it's super easy. You click it once and you go from channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, and so on. Super easy to change individual channels. Now, what if I wanna switch bands? Well, then you just hold it for two seconds and you'll see, it'll start flashing E, then we'll go F, race band, it'll keep cycling through all of the different channels until you find the one that has nobody on it. It's super simple to change channels and it's always important to make sure that you've got an open channel with the least amount of people on it as possible to ensure the smoothest flying. So that about wraps it up on our video about the FPV goggle. We hope you learned a whole lot about this really fun part of the process. And if you have any questions about compatibility or preferences, please let us know in the comments because we really enjoy reading and responding to them. Uh, feel free to check out any of our other videos where you will see uh, not only these goggles in action, but a whole bunch of uh, fun flying and flipping adventures that we like to go on. Make sure to catch us in the next video. Thank you, bye.